Hello. Wow, there's two people in the room. Hello. Hi, thank you so much. Wow, hello. My name is Annika. Uh, if I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, um, tonight we're kind of just going to like dive right on in. So shall we? Let's start in prayer and we'll get started. Lord, thank you so much for uh, this evening. God, I just pray that um, you would meet us here, Lord, and I pray that um, we would each have open ears, open minds, and open hearts to what you have for each and every one of us, Lord, and I thank you for the work that you've already started, um, for the preparation um, that you've been doing and the work you've done in each and every one of our lives, Lord. I pray over this message and that your word would be spoken, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Okay. So tonight, we are going to be talking about works. I titled this message, Works of Love, because I feel like um, that's very uh, telling of the type of work that we do as Christians. And so um, I was debating against like kind of a punchier line, but then I felt like it was probably too aggressive to like start out with. So we're just going to call it Works of Love, because that sounds good. And I feel like that could be like a hit song too. So it's a good place to start. So we're going to be talking about works today. Um, and I wanted to start out with a little story. So if you know me, you know I have two older siblings. I'm the youngest. Um, my brother Matthias is Mr. Lovely Man back there in the corner. And he always hangs out in the back, but that's my big brother. And then my big sister, she is um, in Missouri. She works there and teaches full time. So I'm the baby and I have two older uh, siblings. And most siblings like hate each other when they're kids. And I won't lie and like tell you that me and my siblings never fought or never do fight or like that we didn't hate each other at moments. But honestly, I, as the youngest, I don't know what it was, but I loved my older siblings. And I still do. I still think they're fantastic. And so when I was a kid, I adored them. And I just felt like everything that they did was so cool. <laughs> and especially my big sister. I just felt like if I was going to be anything like her, that would be really cool. And so I wanted to spend as much time with her and draw as close to her as I possibly could. And so much so that I became a mini conspiracy theorist uh, myself. And I decided that if I walked in my sister's footsteps, that I would actually become closer to her and our relationship would grow. And I'm not talking like figuratively anymore. I mean literally. Like I would walk behind her and put my foot exactly where she put her foot. And especially up the stairs because then she wouldn't yell at me for being weird. Then she wouldn't even notice that I was right behind her and I was following her foot all the way up. And so I would put my right foot where she put it and her left foot where, or my left foot where she put hers. And I would follow her and I truly believed that it would make me closer to my sister because I just loved her so much and I wanted to be closer to her. And so I did that for literally like a long time. Like it was not like a one-off or like even when it was cute and I was like six, like I was probably in third or fourth grade. And uh, I really believed in it. So I wanted to be close with my sister. And I did this because honestly, I just loved her. And I walked closely with her because I desired an intimate relationship with her. I wanted to walk side by side with her, literally and figuratively. And so I hope that we all desire this with God as well. I hope that we all desire to walk closely with him, to follow him, to watch exactly where he put his foot and put ours in the exact same place and that we would desire an intimate relationship with him and that we would live lives that honor and mirror him. So that takes action. A walk with God implies action. And the action that we're talking about often results in a work or a deed, or uh, whatever you wish to call it. A work or a deed is um, what we're going to be focusing on tonight. And as we take our action in walking with God, we hope that the product is one that looks like him. So Garrett came up with a lovely little um, action statement, or like tagline, or like a mission statement, or vision, whatever you want to call it, um, all of the above. Um, and it's family on mission. Our goal is that encounter would be a family on mission. And I'm sure you've heard him talk about it, but if you haven't, welcome. 
We are a family on mission. And so that implies that um, everyone in this room, right, would be empowered by one another, be strengthened by one another, be encouraged, that we would be a family, and that we would be pursuing Christ together to deeply know and believe the gospel and the love of Christ. But that we would not only do that for one another, and keep it within these four walls, but that we would pursue that in all areas of our lives beyond these four walls with believers and non-believers alike and that our lives would be on mission for Christ to change the world together and to do it for Christ. And so Jesus models a life that is um, devoted to God and he asks us to do the same, to not keep it within these four walls, but to take it and go, with, go wherever he calls us to go. So we're going to read first out of Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. And no, this isn't going back to sandcastles. Okay. But we are going to read Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. If you don't have a Bible with you, it's going to be up on the screen. And if you don't have a Bible at all, we do have free Bibles that we would love to give you. So come find um, myself, Garrett, or one of our leadership, and we'd love to get you a Bible. So, starting at verse 14. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So, our lives are to be lights on a hill, to be shining in front of others, and they are, they, the product of that light are good deeds that glorify God. That's our vision. That's the, the, that's the charge that Jesus gives us is to be a light to the world around us and to um, devote every action that we make to the one who saved us. And so I want to kind of ask you guys to be very frank and honest with yourself um, and have a moment of reflection And ask yourself if you live a life of service and devotion to God. Do you let your good deeds and your love for Christ shine like the top of the hill that we should? Or perhaps do you tend to keep it under a basket? Do you maybe let it like peek out a little bit when the right people come around? Or is it just wide open? If you keep it under a basket, what's the danger? I mean, really, like, what's the harm, right? We're going to talk about What is the point of a light if it's under a basket? So we're going to read James 2, verse 14 through 20. This stand is so tall, I just had to go up on my tippy toes in order to see the edge of my Bible. That is really embarrassing. I'm so sorry, you guys. Okay, so James chapter 2, verses 14 through 20. That's where we're going to be here for another hot second. So... What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say that you have faith, but you don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see your brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well, but you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? So again, what's the point of the light if it's under a basket? What's the point of all that God did if we aren't willing to share it? James is saying that the proof is in the pudding, okay? He's saying that the proof is in the pudding of the lives that we live in sacrifice for God, that we would be living sacrifices, and that all that we would do would reflect the inward transformation of the new heart and the new life that was given to us by the God that we now know and love that spends time with us and that knows us deeply. A saving faith results in a transformed life. The word promises that we're given a transformed heart. We are made new in Christ, and out of that newness, we experience a transformed life as Christians. 
So James is not saying that we can count on these works to save us, but that we can count on them to be present in life, in a life of faith. So these works are not what we achieve and accomplish in order to uh, receive more of God's affection or to see, receive more of his love or to get his attention. I simply walked where my sister walked because I loved her. If anything, honestly, it probably annoyed her and made her pay less attention to me. So, <laughs> but that doesn't apply to God. But, <laughs> right? So I sought out opportunities to walk closely with her because I loved her. We seek out opportunities to walk closely with God because we love him. What comes out of us, out of our new hearts, what comes out of the heart comes out and it floods out into the world around us. Okay, so as we are made new in Christ, our lives will become transformed. So the natural result of salvation is good works. The natural result of salvation is good works. Works are not the means to achieve salvation, but the result of it. They are not the means in which I achieve salvation, but they are the result of all that God has done for me. So verse 18, we're going to talk about what the result is. We're going to reread verse 18 because that was a little long. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, other have, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. So verse 18, faith is demonstrated by our works. So the inward faith that we deeply know is demonstrated by what we do, how we love, how we, how we interact with the world, how we pursue God. All of that is demonstrated in our works. So our good deeds reveal what we believe, and they reveal whether or not we believe our faith with our tongue, or if we believe it with a living faith. A faith that goes beyond what I speak and permeates everything that I do. So it's our transformative testimony. We talk about testimonies all the time. Garrett cries and gives his up here every week. We talk about transformative testimonies because they are the product of the inward transformation from our new heart. We lead lives of good works that reflect the heart of the God that has saved us and the heart that God has for us and for the, those around us that we interact with every day. So if you knew me before I knew God and before I was devoted to God, you wouldn't recognize me. And that's pretty cool because to be honest, I don't miss it. And my life now is a life that is devoted to God. You can see the faith and the commitment that I've made internally because of the way that I live. I love God and the way that I act reflects that most times. <laughs> These demonstrations should look a lot like Jesus, and they should be marked with the truth of who God is. And each action indeed should reflect what is right here in our word. So our behavior, that can be a behavioral action, right? It doesn't have to just be an internal mindset, but it actually can be our behavior. So the way that we serve, the way that we follow the commands in the word, the way that we proclaim and have a desire to let others know of the good news of the gospel. And in every single deed that we do, it should all be products of the fruit of the spirit. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, blah, 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 okay? All that we do should be done in love and should exude the joy that we have in Christ. And we should treat others with patience as we serve. We should find joy spending time with those who we disagree with. Everything that we do, our behavior and our servanthood and our desire to follow the commands of God is all because of our love. That inward transformation always results in a faith-filled life. So how do you demonstrate your faith? I wanna ask you guys, what are your works of love? Do you feel like these are some, this is something that comes naturally to you? Or is this something that is difficult? How do you demonstrate your faith? We're going to talk about some examples. So if you walked in the front doors, you should have received one of these lovely cards. 
Yay, and if you didn't, come find Garrett or I, mostly Garrett because it was his job. So go tell him, not me, I tried. Wow, you guys are a tough crowd tonight. There's like minimal laughter. <laughs> okay, so you should have gotten one of these serve cards, yes? Yeah, okay. So these serve cards are gonna be your little reminders. They're business card sized, okay? So I want you to stick this in your Bible, stick it in a book, stick it, I don't know, in your mirror or on your like mirror when you get ready in the bathroom, whatever it needs to be. Um, these are gonna be your reminders of a life that is devoted to Christ, okay? So, on the back, we've got love God and love people next to the big dominoes, okay? So, we have the greatest commandment listed. Love God and love people. And then we also have the, greatest, the, the great commission, excuse me, which is to make disciples of all nations. And then on the other side, you have serve, which serve the church, serve the city, and serve the world. So some examples of each of these. So obviously in all that we do, we should love God and love people, right? So treating others the way that God treats us because we're loved by him and we're called to love others around us in the same manner. So great commission, making disciples, that, does that mean you're pouring into someone who you work with? Does that mean you're asking to get coffee with someone who's brand new to the faith? Does that mean that you're um, you know, speaking about your salvation and your belief in, in God and the death and resurrection of Jesus at work with a, you know, a coworker who's asking you questions about you know, your favorite pastime and you say church? Whatever it may be, right? You're spending your time. That is a life that is devoted to God. Serving. So serving the church. So not only just serving one another in this room, that could be with our serve team if you've signed up to volunteer with us, or it can be during small group if you choose to invest in the lives of those around you in an intimate, more intimate setting. That can be serving um, on the communion group over the weekend or the greeting team, whatever that may look like, you're serving one another. That's a life devoted to God. And then the city, does that mean you volunteer for a nonprofit, uh, breathe holds community meals, um, volunteering for stuff like that, uh, doing big brothers and big sisters? All of that is time investing in your city. And then finally, the world. You can serve the world by investing in nonprofits, uh, investing in missionaries who are global, being the missionary yourself. All of those things are the outpouring of the transformation that was within us. That is our works and our action. So this all kind of sounds like a lot to be working for God, but I wanna remind you guys of grace and I wanna remind you that God has grace with you and you need to have grace with yourself. So like we said, these are not all the things that I'm working and striving to get more and more of God's approval and attention, but instead that this is actually the overflow of a love and a relationship that I have with God. This is not for accomplishment. So the Bible compares new believers to babies on the grace note. And so as we grow in our faith, we can begin to see how God transforms us and permeates each and every one of every area of our life and how we deeply know the truth of the gospel and the truth of his words and the design of the life that he's laid out for us. As we grow in those areas, it allows us to do this very easily until it's not easy. But this is our now desire. This is what we long for, is to live a life devoted to God in every area of our life. So we're about to do a decision series. Garrett is launching it next week, or two weeks from now? Next week. No, Talia's launching it next week. Garrett's launching it next week? It's one of those, okay? We're launching a decision series, okay? So in every area of your life, keep this in mind. This goes to work. This goes to friends. This goes to community, this goes to the world, in every area of your life. So we desire for Encounter to be a family on mission. We wanna be lights on the hill, and we wanna shine for God's glory. So 
So our vision truly is to just watch what God can do with a personal connection with each and every one of you. Out of that intimate relationship, we want to watch the result of you pouring out into the world around you and into one another. Because the transformative life that we experience in Christ is so loving and awe-inspiring and overpowering. It's going to be beautiful to watch. And we, as, as a community, get to experience that together. So we want you guys to keep the card with you, put it somewhere that you know that you'll remember it. And if you lose it, come find me and we'll get you another one. But this is what our works are for. It's for the love of God. Okay? Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much um, for your time with us, God. I just thank you for this message and for, for the goal and vision that you give us. Lord, you lay out a beautiful life to live with you. And God, I just pray that we would um, be, rest confidently in that truth that, Lord, this is not, um, this is not striving. This is not to uh, receive more of your love, but, Lord, that it is, it is purely from your love. And it overflows into our lives. Lord God, I just pray that your transformative um, touch would um, be experienced by everyone in this room. And that every area would be transformed by you, devoted to you, and handed over to you, Lord. I pray that every work that we do would bring you glory and praise and honor. Lord, I pray all these things in your name. Amen.